So that's my message. And we're on to Teresa. Go for it. Okay. Uh, well, I love this. You know, we're a democracy and uh, we can, uh, we, uh, uh, partic civic participation is indeed great. And uh, the great thing about Zoom is you can do it with only the headshot. <laughs> uh, so hello, League of Women Voters of Los Alamos County. Uh, I'm talking to you from the uh, National Airport in Washington, D.C., uh, we had uh, some, you know, the, the, the amazing thing about what we do in Congress um, is that we get to really impact uh, uh, federal priorities and local priorities, but we always have to be very flexible on what happens in terms of our ability to vote so that we can be responding to what's happening on the Senate side. And what we've just done in the last two days was vote on um, on moving forward for on the budget. That's what is that in everybody's mind is how do we get the budget through? How do we get the National Defense and Authorization Act through? Uh, so those have been the two biggest pieces of legislation that we've been working on. Uh, the NDAA passed out of the House. It's over in the Senate. Uh, we uh, expect that there will be a vote to amend it to um, have uh, Senator Manchin's uh, permitting uh, legislation attached. Uh, we understand that that vote will not succeed, but he was promised to vote on it. He will get a vote on it. And then they'll move forward on the NDAA. As you all know, the NDAA, it not only authorizes funding uh, for the national defense, but will also include uh, a lot of other provisions that are important and related. Um, the a couple of things that are important for New Mexico is that in the NDAA, we authorize uh, funds to accelerate the cleanup at Los Alamos by $286,000 for Los Alamos National Laboratory. Uh, I'm sorry, $286 million. <laughs> Remember those zeros, you're all going, 286 We can't do anything with that, right? <laughs> and then another $40 million um, uh, for <laughs> the facilities. Um, the, we also uh, included in the NDAA uh, water projects. You know that water projects are key for New Mexico. Uh, so we included money for acequias uh, so they, they could improve their irrigation systems. We added $27 million to that. Uh, and we made sure that many acequias don't have the resources to be able to meet the federal cost share. So we reduced the cost share. Uh, so instead of 25%, it'll be only 10%. And I know some people who are uh, work at Lano, uh, but might uh, live down in the valleys below where acequias actually are important. We also did get more money for uh, infrastructure projects, including 20, almost 22 million for the city of Espanola's water wastewater project. And I know that is close to everybody's uh, concern. Another 15 for water infrastructure in the city of Farmington and 2 million for Mora County. Um, and uh, there were a lot of other uh, provisions regarding water we threw in there. And in general, the NDAA uh, is really moving towards increasing uh, the protections uh, for service members, uh, for women service members, uh, and for uh, increasing their pay. But we've also increased funding for basic research, applied research and advanced technology um, by 2.8 billion. And I know that is something that some of that will indeed flow um, to uh, Los Alamos. On the omnibus budget, uh, we are working on a lot of different projects in there from uh, including um, the, uh, the Cerro de la Oreo wilderness uh, in it and a potential lands factory that might go in. Uh, also, we know we need more money for the Hermes Peak fire assistance because, you know, like Cerro, Cerro Grande was like our North Star of this is how you get it. But, but this fire was so large. And unlike Cerro, Cerro Grande, uh, it, uh, you know, it impacted people's livelihoods because they lived off of those forests. Uh, they, their, their ranches were, you know, in those hundreds of square miles that were destroyed. And so we are hopeful, we've been pushing to get um, additional uh, funding for that. We'll see if it uh, makes it through. The There was an incredible 
like uh, obstacle course where things get peeled off on both sides, things that put in and then peeled off again. And so that's where right now the budget is in the middle of that obstacle course, running between the Senate Republicans and Democrats and then the House Republicans and Democrats, everybody, you know, pushing it one way or another. We did just pass a continuing resolution to the to next Friday, uh, but with the intent that we get something done maybe by the 22nd, 23rd, uh, the continuing resolution was intended to allow, um, there's a framework that's been established, but now to put all the words uh, into that framework uh, that actually would create the budget. There is optimism that there will indeed be a budget and uh, people in Los Alamos know what happens when we, uh, you cannot govern with a continuing resolution. Um, there was a, a classified briefing recently, but it says what everybody knows, which is you can't govern, uh, you can't, it, it is bad for national security. Um, so that's where we're at with that. But it's just been an amazing year uh, to get a lot done for New Mexico. Even if you look at just what we got authorized in the NDAA, um, the Chips and Science Act. I'm very excited about that. I do not let the president say hello to me without me saying to him, I want an enchanted uh, uh, innovation hub in New Mexico because in the Chips and Science Act, uh, we authorized uh, innovation hubs, uh, about 10 of them. And uh, I want one to come to New Mexico. Your delegation, your democratic delegation has sent a letter out about bringing one. Um, Every time, you know, I think I've told the president four times in the last uh, two months uh, that we need to uh, look at New Mexico as an innovation hub. Uh, and people are now starting to come up to me and it's like, what were you telling the president again? It's like the same thing I always tell him. <laughs> Thank you for the Hermit's Peak uh, and all the other amazing things we've done in the last two years. Um, but I want an innovation hub because I think that's key for New Mexico as uh, we look to invent what we need in New Mexico. Uh, in America here and manufacture it here. New Mexico is ideally situated for that. Um, but I think you've all heard us talk about everything else that we've done in Congress the last two years as we get ready for uh, uh, the 118th Congress. A lot of what we're going to be doing is making sure that we implement and that the our communities on the ground see the benefits of that amazing work we did, groundbreaking work we did, uh, historic work we did, investing in our future in America from the American Rescue Plan to infrastructure to CHIPS and Science to the Inflation Reduction Act and so many other bills in between. So I, we can open it up. I have, have maybe another six, seven minutes. And if anybody has any questions, we can uh, talk about them. Yes, I forgot to tell you all. <laughs> Some who who you came a little bit later, but the congresswoman only has a short time because she's flying back to New Mexico. And she's in a car on her phone. So, if does anyone have a question, why don't you just unmute yourself and ask, Becky? So I was curious about what are the chances that the child tax credit mm -hmm. will pass. I gather it has to be done before the end of the year, and it's really crucial for poor families to get that monthly check. So tell us where that stands now. And thank you so much for the good work you do. So the child tax credit, as everybody on this call knows, it raised 50% of the children living in poverty out of poverty. I think it was cool uh, of us uh, to then allow that uh, expanded child tax credit to uh, expire. Uh, and it's because we could not get agreement uh, on with the Senate Republicans on being able to continue it. Rosa DeLauro is the chair of appropriations. Uh, this is a high priority for her um, to make sure that it stays. Uh, once again, we're wanting a, a budget needs to be a Approved, uh, they call it four sides because it's not something where we can just, like we did with the reconciliations, put it in there and, and keep it in there uh, uh, because it was part of um, the American Rescue Plan. It expired and we are working. It is a priority. It is a priority of WASA's uh, 
and we will see if as it goes through that obstacle course, uh, it makes it in there. But there are champions for it. Um, it's, we need to get 10 Republican votes on the Senate side for that. So that's where our, and a lot of things go through, it's, it's almost like you want them to go through quietly and quickly that don't draw a lot of attention, but there's a lot of attention to the child tax credit, its benefits and its values. I, uh, so we'll see if Ross is able to keep it in there and get those 10 senators. Our two senators, 10 Republican senators, our, our two senators are definitely in favor of that. That's good. Anyone else have a question? Really? Come on, guys. Oh, there's two in the chat. Let me see. Um, so the other question was, um, what are you doing to the Cassius? Uh, with that money, what are they going to do to help them? I guess that's basically well, what they will, they will be able to uh, access the money to apply for the money. And it could be for a variety of, of purposes. As you know, working on, on a sec air, you have to lining the ditches, uh, seeing if there are other ways of, of, of using the water to make it more efficient. Um, just uh, fixing the desagües, you know, where the water comes in and is, is pulled out. Uh, as an example, uh, I went to Chama, uh, not Chama, um, Abiquiu, and we saw how releasing water out of Abiquiu Dam destroys uh, some of the ability of the Azequias. It really uh, washes out their uh, points of diversion. So there's lots of different ways in which Azequias will be able to use that, that money. In the Hermit's Peak Bill, and in the disaster declaration, there also is going to be a need to clean out the Asekias to rebuild them because they've been destroyed by the floods. Now, that money will come through Hermit's Peak and will come through the disaster assistance. So this is like kind of regular Asekia money. Um, another thing that we are um, is we are really working on as a delegation is by 70 percent, um, New Mexicans voted in favor of amending our constitution to allow additional money to be pulled out of the permanent fund and used for early childhood education and K through 12 education. There is a requirement um, uh, that seems to indicate that Congress needs to approve that. Uh, so a bill was introduced that's it's been led in the house by Melanie Stansbury, it's been led in the Senate by um, uh, Heinrich, uh, but the Democrat delegation, we're all pushing for it. We're all been working on it. We're all co original co-sponsors. We're trying to get that done. We had tried to get that done in something called a suspension, which is basically everybody's in agreement about this. Nobody's really opposed to it. You know, we put it on a, a, a fast track calendar. It moves through. Um, unfortunately, um, not every member of the delegation was in support of it. Um, in, in the sense that the CD2 uh, representative um, would not commit to us that she was in favor of it. And then uh, as I understand, she was asked directly, are you opposing this? And she noted that she is, which means that if she's opposing it and Republicans oppose in the house, we cannot get it passed um, on that fast track. Uh, now there should be no reason that anybody opposes honoring the will of the people. So we are, one of our priorities is to make sure that we use one of the other mechanisms to make sure that the voters will in New Mexico to allocate more funding to children's happens. And so, you know, we are going to, um, that, that is another priority of ours. So here's a simple little question from our Ed. This is a very simple question. Um, is anything happening to deal with the current El Paso immigration situation or immigration in general at the southern border? How's that so easy? Yeah, that's easy. So, um, you know, there are multiple, th th that question implies a series of different uh, policy issues. Um, and we all, you know, we begin with the fact that our immigration system is broken. We have failed, uh, oh, we have failed for decades to actually address it and fix it. Uh, issues around immigration have become politicized in a manner which makes it hard to actually 
go in and, and start fixing them. There was, because there's multiple things. One is dealing with the border itself, uh, security at the border, making sure we are um, inter, um, uh, interfering with any uh, drugs coming across, um, you know, dangerous things. Like we really need to make sure um, that we interdict fentanyl. We've sent a lot more money to the border so they can look at that. Then there was the issue of applying our immigration laws uh, when people come to the border and want to seek asylum, want to seek immigration. Um, we don't have an Alice Island anymore where the border, you can actually come to the border and get processed and uh, tell us why you're seeking to gain entry into the United States under our existing laws like our asylum laws. Um, and so that's another big issue that needs to get fixed. The administration has a few tools at its disposal to deal with that. But what we really need to do is do an immigration reform bill. We sent over from the House three bills uh, to the Senate um, dealing with dreamers. Uh, seven, over 70 percent of Americans want us to make sure that those who were brought to this country when they were young and only know this country and are in school, are in service, are contributing to our country, we, uh, receive a pathway to citizenship. Um, I was on the floor of the house uh, uh, with a, what they call a, a, a special order hour convening colleagues as we each discuss the importance of fixing the issue around DACA and the Dreamers. Um, we also need to fix issues around our farm worker, a farm worker modernization. We do not have enough uh, hands to actually um, bring in the crops that need to be harvested. Uh, and agribusiness and farm labor unions worked out an agreement. We passed it out of the House bipartisan. It hasn't moved in the Senate. Um, so these are issues that need to be done. Uh, this, we run into the part again, where if we cannot get 10 Republican senators to support uh, addressing and fixing these issues, we can pass it out of the, the House this last two years, which we did, sent it over to the Senate, but because it's been politicized, it is not getting passed on the Senate side. And here we are, we're gonna come to the end of the 118th, incredibly frustrated. I have spent many a day, an hour, in the last couple of weeks, trying to get a breakthrough, trying to get some agreement uh, on something out of the Senate. Um, and we haven't gotten it uh, because it has been politicized in a way that does not allow us to do sensible, reasonable uh, actions for things people really do support. People want to have a solution to our immigration problem. We know that we have a labor shortage because we are not processing immigrants. Um, and we did do one teeny tiny little piece with something called the Eagle Act, which will um, increase the ability of um, visas for highly skilled as well as family reunification. We did pass that out um, yesterday, but that once again, we need to see this stuff happening on both sides. Uh, and next year, we will no longer, the Democrats will no longer be uh, in the majority. So we do not anticipate that this issue will be fixed, but I am very interested in working uh, with my Republican colleagues because I just want to get it done. I don't care who gets it done. We just need to address these issues around the border in the multiplicity of areas that I've talked about. So, I, you know, right the second, this like very second in time, what can we do about all these people coming who have no clothes, no shoes. I look at them, they're wearing sandals. They're carrying them across the Rio Grande. So I'm just wondering, this was a question, not just for me, by the way, but- um, Yeah, yeah I, I'm gonna have to get off because I need to not miss my flight. But um, I think that there were, uh, yesterday I had conversations with some of the women who are organizing at a national level, uh, assistance for refugees, assistance for immigrants. There is a wonderful interfaith uh, uh, um, efforts in New Mexico to provide to that assistance and that, that works across the country. And, you know, I heard some that bills are, and what does it say there, sleeping with, 
this bills are great. Bills would have solved the situation, but if we don't get those 10 Republican senators, we can't get them. But we as people, we as people of faith or people with values of morality and watching what happens can participate in uh, assisting that and assisting uh, whether the refugee be coming from Ukraine, uh, from Afghanistan, or from a war-torn uh, country in in the uh, Triangle, the Northern Triangle, and uh, I don't have time to put it up here now, but we have part. Uh, th there are a lot of points of contacts of people who can help with that. Uh, there's some good in-state interfaith organizations I've met with, and with that, I'm going to have to just jump off because I, I got to go get my. Um, uh, it, there's a lot of rain and things are slowing down here. So we need to get in. Thank you so very much uh, for having me for your lunch. Thank you for the work you do uh, informing uh, people of uh, uh, the importance of participating in civic uh, life and in voting and educating all of us uh, about the candidates that uh, the legal voters are so famous for. 